Tableau is quickly becoming a sort of a state of the art in uh, data science, data visualization. And uh, while there are plenty of uh, programming languages that do similar jobs like R and Python, Tableau has the big advantage that you can do a lot of the work in it without programming, just with drag and drop kind of work. And um, it's pretty much ideal for the types of plots that we do here in our class um, for value visualization. This tutorial is specific to speech in English uh, that has been recorded and transcribed and then force aligned and spectrographically analyzed in Darla. Um, you'll find Darla at darla.dartmouth.edu and it has a very specific output format which uh, the steps I'm showing here are geared to. So we're getting CSV files that contain our formant measurements and we're going to be making four different kinds of plots. The first type is a basic one speaker vowel system plot with all the English vowel in the speaker's uh, repertoire showing the mean point for each vowel. The second type is uh, is a type of plot where we focus on selected vowel points that are interesting to our analysis. The third type is going to be a comparison of two speakers against one another. And the last type is going to be one where we focus on the differences between nucleus and glide, which can be useful, for example, when you're looking at the trajectories of diphthongs. All in all, the basic plot that I'm going to show first uh, takes nine steps to prepare if you start out with the output from Darla already present. So let's get started. We're starting with the first type of plot, a simple vowel system plot for one speaker, and with the first step. And the first step is set up a workbook and Tableau. I've started Tableau here. Um, if you're a student, you can get a free license for Tableau. If not, you can download a demo version that'll work for two weeks. So uh, get a hold of a locally installed version of Tableau. Start a new workbook. You do that by simply clicking on File, New. Start a new workbook. You do that simply by clicking on File, New in Tableau. And this is what a nice blank new workbook looks like in Tableau. Step two is going to be that we're going to load all the formant files that we want to work with. For this first type of plot we only need one speaker, but let's assume that we might at some point also end up working with two speakers. Um, so let's just load all of the vowel sheets, all of the Darla output uh, formant files that we need here and um, so that we're ready to work with whichever one we want to later. Uh, what we need to do is here in the data tab click connect to data and uh, here in to a file we're going to say more and I have my uh, Darla files. When you work with Darla, it emails you the output files. I have these on my hard drive in a specific uh, folder. And um, my speakers are called Gina and Mike. And uh, I'm going to open them one at a time. First, Gina. And second, I'm going to add Mike. I'm going to click on Add here. I'm going to go to File again and More. Click on mic, open. Okay, they're both open now. They're showing up as files here. And uh, I'm going to just work with the first one with Gina. I'm gonna just click on that. And uh, that'll just be my data for now. Number three, um, select the format files for the current plot. Like I said, we're only working with one speaker. Um, I'm going to scroll down here uh, and just look at the first column name to make sure that it's really Gina is um, the only speaker I'm working with. So what I have here indeed is all Gina's vowels and that's what I want to stick with. And so she's selected now here in the data source tab. I can now hop over to sheet one and start working on my plot. Here's my empty plot pane. That's where I'm going to make 
my vowel plot for Gina now. In step four, I'm going to uh, specify what's going to be on the x-axis and what's going to be on the y-axis. F2, the second formant, is uh, typically on the x-axis and F1 is on the y-axis. To specify this means that we're going to uh, see over here in the left-hand pane um, where the column is. This, these are all the column names here. Where the column is for F1 and uh, we're going to drag F1 here to rows and F2 to columns. We're going to work with the simple one that just says F1. So click on it and drag it to rows and you see that maps to the Y axis here. Uh, and then click on F2 and drag it to columns. You see that maps to the X axis and we have an x-axis that starts at zero and goes up into the high values and a y-axis that starts at zero and goes up. If you've worked with vowel plots before, you're probably already noticing that this is going to be an issue we're going to have to address later because uh, in vowel plots the axes are reversed. But for now, um, we're doing good. We're going strong here. Step five, we're going to now visualize um, every vowel with one point and we're going to use color as a distinction and to do this um, what we need to do is scroll up here in the left hand pane uh, where all the column names are from our data sheet and uh, the column name we're looking for is vowel right we want to visualize the differences according to vowel class and since we were wanting to draw dots that are distinguished by color, we need to choose a mark. Marks are uh, the items that can be drawn in the plot. So we choose this type of mark. And uh, the easiest way to work with that is to just click on our column and drag it onto the mark you want. Uh, we now have one dot for each vowel class in Gina's speech. At this point, we notice that there are several ways in which this does not resemble a normal vowel plot. Uh, the shape is odd and the first thing that I should point out is for each point is a sum of all the F1 and F2 uh, measurements in this vowel class. That is nonsensical. To sum up all the measurements for a speaker makes no sense. What we need of course is means. We need averages. We can change that calculation by clicking on our F1 and F2 uh, uh, tabs here. Click on there and change the measure from sum to average. We have to do this for both formants. Measure from sum to average. This distribution looks a little more like a regular vowel plot. Step six, we're going to add labels for each of the points. There is another mark for this. The mark is called label and we're going to utilize it by simply just dragging the vowel column over onto that mark as well. So we have a point now for, for each vowel. If you are a student in my class, then you are used to working not with these vowel labels. These are ARPABED labels. You are instead used to working with Wells lexical sets. Well, guess what? We can just edit um, these vowel labels to use um, Wells lexical sets instead of these alphabet labels. In order to change them, we're going to assign aliases. The aliases are going to be what's displayed. Here in the label marks uh, tab, let's click on vowels and say that we want to edit the aliases. And here on the left, you see the true value of each vowel point. Under the alias, value alias, uh, you can say what you wanted to say. Um, for my students, I have a key that's on our Canvas site that shows you which ARPABET label corresponds to which Wales lexical set label. I'm just going to put these labels in here real quick. Okay, here we are. Each vowel point has its Wales lexical set label. And now we can address the elephant in the room, which is that the fleece vowel is at the bottom right, trap is at the top right. That is all not what we're expecting. 
in a typical vowel plot, fleece should be, well, fleece is a high front vowel and that is usually plotted at the top left. So in order to get this to plot the right way, we're gonna reverse uh, the F1 and F2 axes. That's step seven. Step seven, we're gonna reverse first the Y axis, right click somewhere on the Y axis, or if you're on a Mac, hit control and then click. Edit axis, and you wanna choose the reverse option. And the other box you need to click is include zero because you do not want to include zero. If we include zero, that gives us a lot of blank space. We don't need zero F1 um, in our plot. So don't include zero, reverse and don't include zero, close and do the same thing for the X axis, reverse and don't include zero. Okay, this looks a lot more like it. Now we have lot and thought as a low back, we have fleece as a high front vowel, and this is really what we expect a vowel plot to look like. In step eight, let's just set the labels for this plot to what we need them to be for like publication or presentation. I just clicked on the plot title now, and um, right now it, it shows here that it's giving a default. I'm gonna call it something else. I'm gonna say this is Gina's, uh, vowels feel free to come up with um, better titles here you can style the title i'll just make it a little bolder and that'll be enough for now genus vowels i actually don't like that it's all caps but we're just demoing i also would like a different title for the y-axis and x-axis i don't like that it says average there i just wanted to say f1 And same here for the x-axis, I just want it to be labeled as F2. Okay, so we did good. We have a solid, exportable, usable vowel plot of one speaker. So the last step is that we're going to export this visualization as a graphic file which we'll be able to use in a, a term paper, in a publication, in a presentation, whatever comes up. To export our plot as a graphic file, we'll just go to Worksheet, Export, Image. Worksheet, Export, Image, and you get some choices, what all you want to include. Like I said, the legend isn't that necessary. I'm just going to exclude the legend, but title, view, caption is all good save and I can now give it a name plot one Gina and PNG is a good format that works everywhere so save that our work is done we can now find this plot in our folder can click on the graphic file and can do anything with this drag this into uh, Microsoft Word, uh, Google Docs, uh, PowerPoint, wherever you need it.